from Krimer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Allied Steel Road, earlier this month, launched its second stretcher leveler, a machine which helps to eliminate the stresses in steel amid a somewhat lackluster local business environment. Simone Lietke, who attended the launch, tells us a bit more. The stretcher leveler, which weighs about 250 tons and has a length of 120 meters, is capable of processing material up to 12 millimeters thick, 2 meters wide, and up to 15 meters in length, which is then fed from quills that can weigh up to 33 tons, allowing for greater operational efficiencies, which results in shorter lead times to delivery, was part of the rationale behind the purchasing of the second stretcher leveler, according to Allied Steroid Executive Director Warren Rippon. We realised a few years ago, five years ago, we had to make some kind of change in our business, some kind of difference, because we had seen the advantages of stretcher leveling and realised we needed to make a change. So I went and did a couple of site visits in America, found the right equipment, found the right suppliers, engaged with a lot of processes in America, took advice from them and realized that this was the way of the future for leveling of steel and the quality that is required as more and more impetus is going on to laser quality and stuff. So we realized the investment had to be made to make a difference. We've seen a huge benefit of this and, and, and the challenges have, have really uh, expressed that. So we're very pleased with what, where we've got to so far and hence the second level has come in now, the second stretcher to enable us to sort of, to operate on the balls of our feet and to allow our customers to see the benefits of not letting them down. Sometimes we have issues with, you know, you can have a breakdown um, and, and getting around things like that, we've done that. So the benefits have been huge. Um, so yeah, we're, we're very positive going forward. Despite the supply chain of downstream steel in the manufacturing industry needing more protection, Ripon remains hopeful for change. This is supported by his quietly positive outlook moving forward, where he believes the industry will see progress next year after experiencing a slump. We're back to the quality thing. We've, de we've decided that you know there's been more and more impetus on quality and this is the way forward. Our customers have, have uh, embraced it. Um, they're very happy with what we're supplying them. Um, there are issues downstream. Uh, I think I think there needs to be more protection downstream in the manufacturing sector. In other words, material coming in any, with steel in it should be have some kind of tariff applied to it, so it can allow our local manufacturing sector to be more competitive. So that to me is a problem. I think it needs to be addressed. Uh, we have voiced our opinion on it, so we're hoping to see some change in that. Uh, but yeah, look, I, I'm. I'm Quite positive. I think we, I think we've hit the bottom uh, of our of the steel industry sort of let's call it slump. But uh, I think from next year we're going to start seeing progress. Uh, we'll be confident. The sentiments are supported by Allied Steroid Group Chief Executive Arun Chada, who explained that even though South Africa is currently in a recession, the steel industry has been suffering for many years. So the downstream industry in this country has been suffering for many years. Uh, this facility produces steel which is to such a good quality that uh, the, the downstream industry finds it cheaper in manufacturing their goods. The less of scrap, less of wastage uh, that comes out of it. You know, we're going through a recession at the moment. The downstream industry is suffering because the imports that are coming in from uh, overseas. So the duties that have come into the country because of uh, the raw material steel, has not flown through to the finished products. Typical case is a gas cylinder, which is now being imported into the country with a regulator, with finished, absolutely finished, cheaper than what our guys in South Africa can make it. It used to be a huge industry uh, in South Africa. It's no more an industry in South Africa. I think there's only a couple of smaller guys like Kedek and all, who are still making gas cylinders but the commercial gas cylinders are not made in this country anymore. Other news making headlines. South African French companies collaborate on sustainable cities. The French South African Sustainable City Conference was recently held in Johannesburg and organized by Business France, which supports and facilitates the development and success of French and foreign businesses that want to expand abroad. Business France is, a, is an agency, we are a national agency, we're not a company and, and our role is really to, to promote French businesses internationally. 
So we have this one-sided role where we help French businesses develop internationally and this other role where we promote France's image as an attractive investment destination. So we play these two roles and in between organize events such as the Sustainable City Conference and uh, try to promote the agenda set out by the Paris Agreement in 2015 as well by organizing conferences like this. Uh, the, the, the four main components of this conference are uh, in a way what we would like to, to enable access to for everyone which are affordable services in terms of water, energy, housing and transport. So that is today's big focus, uh, all the while knowing that there is a big link with unemployment and poverty. So we are trying to get South Africans and French stakeholders to put together the fact that you cannot build a sustainable city model without enhancing the livelihoods of people who live in those cities. And that is a result of obviously working on the whole poverty and inequality uh, alleviation. That's Kwima Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.